God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Face the Truth, the Patreon edition. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you guys checking this out. And this is going to be really cool. Um, everyone, just please welcome my guest, uh, Hollis Dunlap. And he is going to, we're going to look at his work and talk about his paintings and uh, just see where it goes from there. I love, I love his work. And so hopefully we can uh, get into some of the details and all that stuff. So um, let's, let's do this thing. share my screen now um let's see how that works yeah you can do that we we'll just go through some stuff gotta and... watch out what i got on my screen here all right let's see. <laughs> i think it's safe <laughs> wait i knew you had an only only fan page does that work yeah that looks great right, that's cool. awesome okay i can see that my my slide of this painting has a little like there's that little white edge is like shouldn't be oh. there. I'll have to edit that that's not part of the painting but that's okay <laughs> Um, I figured I'd start with this one just because it's, this is not a newer painting, but it's not old either. This is a little bit kind of like what I was doing like two years ago, mm -hmm. where I was still, I was getting into, I had to have a lot of models at night because I was working during the day. Um, and I would set up a lamp in here to get like a high contrast. Oh, okay. Uh, and um, I did a lot of paintings of this one girl. Um, she just looks really cool. She's a friend of mine, but she also looks amazing. She has like this super long black hair. And I liked that as like a motif to kind of just unify all the shadows. Oh, yeah. Um, like I love like Baroque painting, which is like painting in the 1600s um, where they got into this thing with like super uh, dark shadows and bright lights. Um, like if people don't know, probably like the most well-known painter of that style is Caravaggio mm -hmm. um, who's like one of my favorite painters um, so I was this is like I always tell people I'm like the cliff notes version of that you know it's like <laughs> this is like a a modern sort of take on that but it's not as dialed in as those paintings but I try to get into the rendering and stuff as much as I can like I guess I don't know if you, you can see me moving the mouse right mm -hmm. um, like like so I try to go for the lighting um, so I'm really interested in big planes of light and shadow and within these shapes, I like to kind of experiment. Like you can see in this area, for example, um, I, I use a palette knife there. I kind of like, experiment. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I like to, thanks. I experiment with the textures within the shapes, mm -hmm. um, which is something I really like to do because, because I find that like, like here, you know, there's like a thick mark of paint. Like I like the contrast of a realistic image, but when you can <coughs> see the, the, the way the paint looks. Yeah. Um, that, is, me, is this on a, is this on a panel? Yeah, it's on a panel. Um, and this one, I was just, when I did this painting, I was starting to kind of experiment with color. So that's why I'm letting like this weird little yellow thing trail off here. I was just kind of messing around, um, but it's what? still a fairly traditional painting. Um, and I like to do things like connecting the shadows to the background. Like yeah. I was just going to say like, one of the things I like about the background is it's so suggestive, <laughs> but like, there's enough there. You, you can, you don't need to see any more than that. And I love that. There's like the, just, they're just like I didn't shapes. I have to define yeah. all my empty wine bottles. Yeah. Exactly. But, <laughs> but like, and one of the things I like too, is um, there's a lot of areas where it looks like paint, like there's like there's like parts of like an underpainting yeah. are popping through like if you yeah. you know um like you know over in the far left or whatever yeah, I, let, I let that stay there because sometimes when i cover those areas i don't like the painting as much 
Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Is there there's like this, there's like yeah. parts where like did you do like a like a kind of a gray undertone or something? A little bit. Yeah, I kind of drew it out a little. I mean, it's it's fairly direct, but I did I do that. I kind of put like see this color here. Yeah. When I'm starting a painting like this size, a lot of times I put on a tone over the whole thing. Mm. And then I, I pull out the lights. I'll show you some other ones I have here because I have some that are you can see the beginning process more. Um, so maybe I should go to okay. I should, maybe I'll go to I'll try to get to some of those. I know we only we have a limited time. Um, so no, yeah, maybe. whatever you want to do. Yeah. Why don't I go to another one? All right. So I'm going to X out of this. So see you later. All right. There's that. <laughs> Whoops. Um, oh, that was shared windows. Oh, I get it. So that's how it's going to work. All right. Um, all right. So let me find another one. Um, well, I'll show you. All right. So here is, I can't really, I wonder if I can share two screens at once. Well, um, let me think how I want to do it. I'll show you. Um, well, I'll show you another similar portrait um, just while I, whoops, while I do this. So here's another, this is another portrait. I did, and this is in that kind of older style too. Um, and I guess what I thought I would do is go from like kind of what I, how I got to like what I'm doing now. Yeah. So this is similar in that, like, I think this painting, like I painted the head, I think over two days, I think each hand took me a day. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah. And I think that the sleeves took, so I was painting fairly traditionally. This painting is kind of, I was looking at painters, Spanish painters. There's a guy named Giuseppe de Ribera, hmm. who was a ridiculous Baroque painter. Um, very kind of traditional, like high contrast. Like you can see how the shadows connect into the, the face here. Um, yeah. And it's not really that detailed, but I like to, this one has a little of that ex, like thicker paint in a spot like that. Mm. Um, and you're kind of using the light and shadows to define things. Yeah. Like, and like you don't really see the fingers in here. I like doing that stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that too. This guy, you know, we were talking about caricatures before, and this guy has a really interesting face. Like he has a, he he has a lot of character character to him, and I wanted to capture that. Yeah. Um, you know, usually portraits aren't my favorite, but this one was fun for that reason. Um, I'll show you that's like the awesome. process. Yeah. Whoops. There it goes again. Sorry about that. That's I don't right. know how to do that in any other way i'll show you a couple other kind of traditional ones and then i'll go to the more kind of psychedelic colors man like <laughs> um, so this one i this is a painting from this summer where i did um and this is after one day um with this guy this is after this is so this is like five hours into the painting mm. um so i'm still kind of using a lot of paint i'm painting like really fast um from the model um and i'm just kind of really just making quick decisions trying to trying to organize like where the shapes are in his head yeah thing, that's like, interesting i like i like that just like the dabs like that yeah there's a lot it's kind of busy you know but like i was trying to that's get cool. just so he was moving around kind of a lot and um but finally, I settled into where I'm like, sooner or later, you have to make a decision like, all right, his eyes are going to be there. I'm not going to move the angle up or down on either of them. And I'm going to kind of stay there. So this was after the first day. Um, and I just, I like really kind of put a lot of paint on there. And you're kind of trying out every little color to see what looks the best. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, and he's got, he had like really warm toned skin, but the light that we had had like a cooler, like a bluer color to it. And I kind of like that sort of thing to like take some of the colors that you might see here and mm -hmm. put them in the figure. Yeah. And I love doing these kind of crazy brush strokes because I like painters like Van Gogh and I like this stuff. So this is after the first day. So by from here, I'll show you the next one. Um, let's see how. And that's pretty awesome, man. I, 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 I like it like that almost. <laughs> thanks it's so yeah, it's so I'll, cool yeah well some people do that's a funny thing a lot of times when i put up demos when they're half done people i can tell when people like them more i'm like damn so let well me show it, you. This, there's like such a nice movement there that's just like yeah it's, it's fun to see because you know the one thing i like about that just even at that stage is um 
there there it's like an abstract painting but yeah it, it's also exactly. set in realism like it, it's so, like exactly. it's like a nice mix yeah so this is the oh that's awesome after the second day and That's I so know what cool. you're saying. And like, I was trying to keep some of that, you know, to keep some of this, the thick marks of paint. Um, but by now I can kind of render, I was trying to go after his character a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got into these shapes a little more. I mean, you've um, got really nice um, definition of muscles, but in the, like the, like on the face that with just the subtle, you yeah. know, that's, that's man. Um, like a couple of years ago, I was um, I was doing all these commissions, oil paintings for uh, like like portraits for a university in Maryland, and um, it was I had a lot of fun with it. And while that I was doing these paintings, there was a sergeant exhibition in Chicago, mm -hmm. so I I remember like spending all this time like rendering out this suit coat, you know, painting a suit coat he's a it's a bitch man yeah, yeah, yeah. like all the little the shine and all it and i remember going and i see these sergeant paintings and it's like the fold in the suit in the elbow is like literally like two brush strokes like yeah, and i'm like yeah. like what yeah. no yeah, way and, and and just like you know <clears throat> i'm like doing these like super detailed painting i know and then yeah. i go to i see sergeant i'm like what in the world it's like it looks more alive and I can count the brushstrokes. Yeah. He's, good oh. at that. he's oh, one of those man. guys. I mean, he's super good at like, I think he also slaved over his work, but he makes it look like he didn't mm. um, like even this painting was a two day painting. It was hard to do, you know, but yeah, I mean, it was like at first when this guy started posing, I was having a hard time getting the position of the head. Right. I mean, that's one thing about, about this is like you kind of have to be willing to move things around a little bit but i i definitely don't want to make too many changes i want to get to the point where i can do something like here like losing the edge yeah a little bit on the back of his head there mm -hmm. if you don't get the drawing right that won't look good you know and i definitely i spent a lot of the time just adjusting the shape of his skull to the like and i don't even know there's something about figuring out that puzzle that's exciting to me like kind of mm -hmm. Figuring yeah. out the things by eye that, you, you know, and, and getting it to look right is it's satisfying as long as I get it right eventually, you know? Um, and, you know, it's just also about like, I like to paint like little things like this. So there's an abstraction, like you talked about abstract painting. Yeah. This sort of thing is kind of like my way of doing a little bit of abstract painting or, or this stuff here with the thick marks. Um, yeah. It's cool because I mean, it's, it, I mean, first of all, the brushwork is awesome, <laughs> but like the, 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 the suggestions in the background, you don't even need to know what that is. It just gives that illusion of its own, even though it's thick and painterly, it's almost has like this out of focus, like feel. And, this um, was actually a part that I wished I had more time on because what, I mean, it, not that it matters necessarily, but it was like a flowery pattern on the wall. Mm. And I really, if I had had one more day, it would have been cool to kind of paint that in a little bit because I liked the colors of it, but I just had, you know, whatever it was. It was a painting that I did in front of students mm -hmm. to try to show them some things. So you do what you can um, in that case. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'll go to some other ones. You know, it's funny. You're saying the guy was moving around a lot. I feel like, <laughs> did you, do you ever say like, Hey, could you stop moving? Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, he actually, this guy was, he, yeah. In the beginning, he, I think it was kind of like what the way it works for me is in the beginning, it helps when they're more still. And I think that whenever I'm demoing for the class, I'm always nervous in the beginning. Cause I want it to go well and mm -hmm. it can get kind of tense. And I, I usually try to like, I, I remember at one point I was like, you know, let's just chill. And like, I, I just kind of decided I'm going to calm down and then everything got better. And like, yeah. he ended up being really fun to paint. But um, I think like, no it one is, ever knows what to make of. It is nerve wracking. Like I, I I've done it live things a lot and it's really, yeah. yeah. Cause, uh, but like I, I, one time I was doing like years ago, I tried doing live caricature. I did it for a summer at a, a, a Navy pier in Chicago and it would drive me nuts. I'm doing caricatures, real, like within like a 10, 15 minute caricatures of people. 
um, in full color and, and everything. It's crazy. But um, I would, people would just, I, I would say to people, hey, and they look up at me and go, why don't you pretend like someone's trying to draw you? <laughs> and they'd be like, what? And I'm like, stop moving so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and my boss would be like, you can't talk to people that way. And I'm like, well, then, and I would, I would but it, it became kind of funny. So I'd be yeah. like, hey, hey, buddy. Yeah. This guy, this guy did a good <laughs> job. I mean, it was a long pose. So I, some people are more fidgety. I would definitely say this guy was, he was one of the more still ones yeah. I had. I've had people that are all over the place and you just do the best you can. Um, yeah, that's amazing, man. It looks really good. I should show you some other ones. Um, so, all right, Xing out of that. It's funny. I say that same thing to my daughters now when um, my wife takes so many photos of them. It's insane. I don't think anyone's had their picture taken more than my daughters. But um, sometimes, like we're at this, we're at in, like a really cool place with an amazing background. She wants to get a picture, and they're just like, you know, they're, they're like, oh yeah, two years old, two and five. Yeah. And I'm like I'm, I'll like, hey, pretend like someone's trying to take your picture right now. And my daughter's like, what? <laughs> yeah. We are getting our picture taken. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. yeah. Well, kids are just—they're gonna be. Oh, I've yeah. done portrait, portraits of kids. Yeah. Um, and that was challenging. Oh yeah. Uh, even if I'm using photos, it's challenging to get them to get in the right position, you mm -hmm. know, just to get the right angle where I know they're going to look the best. Yeah. Um, so I think I'll show you a couple, like I started a, a couple years ago, I started to just want to experiment with color more. And so I started doing some paintings like this one, um, which is, oh, let me find, let me share the screen. Here we go. Um, so this one, I kind Damn. of decided to try to do all the same sorts of drawing things that I would do, but use almost like ridiculous colors Dude. Um, and see what I could make work. This um, is awesome, man. Thanks. Um, so I used like, I just wanted to use like the worst possible, like fluorescent colors, but try to make them look good. Um, so I kind of, for this painting, picked like a pink and green color idea um so that's what this is sort of about so the skin is like kind of icy um, i love that you're that you are this is important i think for people to hear and see because the i don't think it's talked about enough but pushing yourself giving yourself challenges yeah and so you don't stay you know i think it's just important as an artist and as a person person for just personal yeah. growth and oh, um yeah. and, and it's just it's really it's it's such an awesome experiment to like hey these colors are god awful but, <laughs> but what can i do how how make can i make it a beautiful thing yeah i mean i i, I definitely mean, know i mean one thing for me is i say there i think for this painting i feel good about the color i think what it is is when you're using this color in the same painting as this color for example the potential for it to be bad is pretty high so for me the challenge was to figure out a way to make them look good um so and i think that all my kind of experience painting over the years helps me do that like knowing yeah. how to make a really harmonious painting that's what um, i was going to say is you've got a really good balance because those you have those colors all throughout the painting yes, so exactly. it, it, it it pulls it together you know exactly right man i put the same color here that's here Basically, she's completely connected to the environment. And that's yeah. the idea. Like right here, there's no line on the side of her butt right there. It just goes right into the drapery. Yeah, and that's, that's like nice. super important for, for it to work. Um, but so it's got some of the same stuff that that other earlier painting with the darks had. It's just that this one um, has brighter colors. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't know. I like that sort of thing. Like, there's a lot of painters that do this sort of thing, but not as many in the realist painting kind of category. There's more abstract painters that do it. Um, so I, and I like a lot of that kind of painting. I like, you know. Well, I mean, here's the thing that my thought on this is that, you know, nude figure paintings is, it's like overdone. <laughs> I mean, there's me so that. many, it's just- I know. And so for me, when I see something like this, it's refreshing because it's taking, uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's, 
there's just some, it, I don't know. There's something, there's like an energy to it. Um, and it's not, it's just a typical same I know thing that you see all the time. You well, know? there's a lot of that. I agree with you, man. And like, it drives me crazy because I think that a lot of modern galleries don't like realist painting and for good reason, because a lot of the people that do it are very, they're traditional in a, in a, in a way that doesn't appeal to me. Like they paint women, even this painting for me, I don't know if I would do this exact one right now. I mean, it's like that typical dude painting a naked girl thing. And for me, I mean, I like painting naked men too. I don't care what it is. I'll paint anybody. It doesn't yeah. matter to me. It's, it's always, you know, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's always like that, but, but um, I have like, you know, there's artists that I really don't care for that I kind of get lumped in with. <laughs> there's just a fine line about like, there's a fine line between like beautiful and kind of cheesy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You'll see probably the most of that with paintings of like female nudes. Um it's just there's so many that are just they might be rendered well, but they're not interesting. Um, and, you know, I, it's not like I think this is the most interesting painting either. I think there's a lot of people would say, oh, there's it's another guy painting a girl that looks sexy or something. That's not what I was. I mean, it's not that I am not conscious of that, but mm -hmm. but it's not like the message that I'm trying to put across. Um, this one for me was a, a lot more about the color um and just trying to create some kind of mood with that you know it's funny because i did um like years ago i was um i was invited to be in a gallery show and it was a it was a nude show and my uh, my good friend of mine was doing it and he built a stage in the in the show um with this kind of curtain thing and you can't see through it all the way you could just basically you could barely see and it's more of like a silhouette and he would invite people during the show to go up with there and there's a desk and a table and um and you can just there was things in there you could sit on and whatever but he invited people to get naked and just be in so during the show people would just get naked and you could see them kind of and one girl got naked and did her homework it just it was like really weird but but anyways i i was i was um i wanted to do a really cool piece for the show because i that for the same thing i just think of like these nudes are all the same and it's going to just be a bunch of poses, you know, like the classic poses that you see over and over again, you know, arts, art school paintings. And I didn't, I didn't want to do anything like that. So yeah. my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, I thought about it for a while. And finally I was like, I know this sounds weird, but for me, one of the things I love about that I'm attracted to with women is gravity. Like <laughs> I like when women's, body like when their breasts hang or like when their hair hangs a little bit or like or yeah. just like a woman in a most natural way yeah. not yeah, yeah, like that's yeah. that's me that's most attractive and so i had her lay on the floor and and just to, to see how her body would just what yeah. what it does like laying on the floor um and then i had this idea of like i want it to be more mysterious so i i wanted her to have a blank stare in her face kind of like like, is she alive? You know, I don't know. It just was like this interesting thing. I thought it'd be kind of, and then because she was on the floor, she had like this vein kind of popping out in her forehead <laughs> and like, and her, her, the way her breasts and her body were laying on the floor was not the most flattering, but it, it was so real. Yeah. See, that sounds way more interesting and, even than this painting to me. I mean, <laughs> I think like, I agree with you though. I mean, that's in fact, I want to X out of it and find another one, but um, I know what you mean though. I mean, it's definitely, I definitely, it's something I want to do. Like, like, like I like, you're talking about gravity. Like here's a drawing I did. Um, and I love drawing this model for this, that reason, like of like, just. Oh yeah. Different types of forms. Like this is one of my favorite models to draw right now. Oh um, yeah. I, I've drawn a few like this as well. Like it just. Yeah. She's amazing. So much yeah. there. Yeah. I know, like the forms are just like rolling. The shadows and everything. It's see, that's what's funny. Like people don't. Some people that like, don't understand what, like, why are you drawing naked people? It's like they don't get. It. It's like it's not. We're you're not thinking that way. You're thinking no. shape and like. No, and, I'm. And yeah, exactly. I'm contrast and yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna get some girls to get naked. Like yeah, I, no. I don't think I've I've thought that. You know, 
a single time in my life, unless it was like at the time, like someone who I was dating or something, you know, like, it, like oh, yeah. there's ways to do portraits of somebody that feel more intimate. Um, but that's not what I'm doing generally. This, um, I also this just certain- love your, just your marks. Like your, Thanks. it just, it just has such a, there's, it's like a weird uh, cross hatching yeah. mixed in with, it's almost like you're the way that you're drawing is like you're painting with yeah is this exactly. char is it charcoal this one especially this is vine charcoal and oh, okay. that's probably the one medium that's the closest to painting like if yeah because it, it feels like a painting yeah. in a lot of ways yeah yeah you can put these big areas of dark on there um so like you can create this yeah. shadow and this would take you know a week to do with a pencil and you can do it in three or four hours with vine charcoal yeah. Um, it's so nice yeah. how big is this um 18 by 24 inches yeah. so this is the kind of stuff that i would want hanging in my house you know what <laughs> i mean like i love that kind of stuff well i'll make like, a deal with you one of these days <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really cool man yeah I, I like drawing this kind of model you know it's just like you know different um different types of people you know mm-hmm. um so so I've done a few more of like kind of experimental color things too. Like I did this one. I don't know how much time we have. I'm just going to go through them. Um, Like 15 minutes or so on this. Here's another one I did with kind of experimental oh, nice. color. Um, and this one I was trying to do some more, like showing some weird stuff in the background here. Wow. I love what you did, like with the face and the hair, the, those colors right. in there. Yeah, I was trying to do that same, it's kind of ridiculous green to pink thing. Um, and at one point, I think I was just taking so cool. pure white and kind of scraping it over the top. So this thing says we have 10 minutes left. Okay, that's fine. But but we can, we can, we can redo it again and just if we don't have enough, you know, to add some more. Sure, sure, yeah. But this one is a similar thing where I kind of figured out the colors I wanted to use. Um, Man, this is, I just love that so much the color thanks i wanted to do something uh lighter um you know with these kind of marks and just kind of make up some weird drawing stuff here like her hair wasn't really doing that um and just whatever um yeah that's really awesome man thanks um and um what else do we have i'll go to another one here's another one this one i did this kind of weird red one I was trying to do um, more, almost like an abstract painting um, oh, of, yeah. just, of just shapes, um, but it's also a figure. So it's like a sculpture, mm-hmm. but, if you, but if you look at it up close, it's like something like this. It's just a shape of blue. Yeah. This is, and I did a smaller, and it, you're still, I'm still like losing the edge. So there's connecting things. Yeah. Uh, and I was trying to use, basically I wanted to use the, the most intense color I could in this painting and try to make it work somehow. But it's just about these big, like this is a pretty big, yeah. like 50 inches tall. Mm. Um, actually, I have it in here in the other room, but um, I just wanted it to be almost abstract, like a big area of like purple, a big area of red, yeah, square of blue. It's really interesting. Yeah, I think I think we might even talked about this one on the our first podcast and i think you were working on it i think at the time i was i probably i might have been man i destroyed so many brushes with these paintings because like the red it just takes over everything and i got to a point you can see actually in my behind me in my living room i have another one back here um that i'm i it could be done but i've kind of been you know just fucking with it Mm -hmm. um but um i just got into this thing where i wanted to do big flat shapes so that's what this is about kind of like where i wanted it to almost look abstract yeah that's so awesome. uh, thanks man um i appreciate it. it's cool to be able to show some things i like the screenshotting works because like you know instagram or stuff like that is so bad because you can't huh. zoom in and here i can kind of show what the brush marks are doing in here yeah um, and it's cool to be able to do that um you know, and this is a big painting. Um, and I, in this one, I was trying to kind of do more calm brush strokes. So like some of the other ones you were noticing, there's kind of crazy mm-hmm. 
and I thought I went too far that way. So I wanted to do one that was like smoother. So that's kind of what I was trying to do with this one. Uh, and yeah, that's cool, man. I, that's, it's, I, I really, it's a, it's refreshing. I think seeing stuff like that. Oh, I like should. It's, yeah. Thanks. I should show you a couple more. So I wanted to do a picture. I want to do some paintings of like a, a, of two people. So I did all these studies. I did some studies like this one, Excuse me. Um, which is a drawing of two people that I know. Um, oh, nice. And I wanted, you know, I thought they were interesting and like, kind of like, I don't get into like, I don't do a lot of, cons I don't know what I would say politics or whatever, but I liked having like that. They were like a biracial couple. I thought that was good. I was like, you know, people should be together, I, you know, yeah. whatever. So, I wanted to draw them together in kind of this circular way. Yeah. Um, and um, just the different tones on their faces was interesting to me. Um, and um, it's very cool, man. Thanks. This one's like vine charcoal with some regular charcoal too. Um, so I did this one of them sort of was the first one. And then I did another painting, which is completely different, but I'll show that to you. Um, but this is like a bigger painting of the two of them. Um, and um, this one also, I kind of had like a color idea, although I just hung a blanket that was pink behind them because I liked that color. Yeah. And I wanted to do that big color, but just kind of have the two of them kind of together. Um, and I liked the different colors that you get, you know, like his color where you get these almost yellows and violet colors. Yeah. And she's more like some of the same colors in the highlights, but there's more reds or whatever. Um, and I just wanted to kind of put that together in a composition. It's awesome, man. I, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of really cool. I, I, even his striped shirt is yeah. such a cool part of it, you know, just like the just it breaks things up, with, you know, that hands awesome. Yeah. Too. It's good to have a yeah, thanks. It's good to have like a pattern. Um, yeah that's awesome I like painting, painting hands so it's nice to do that and it has still some of that color like with the yellows and kind of this color is in her hand too so it all of that unifies it and all in good stuff yeah that's awesome cool man thank you and yeah i wish i i could show this is a big painting too so i do think like they look better in person you know like as usual you know it's but it's Oh yeah, I know. It's that's a frustrating thing about painting. Yeah, um, I mean it's still cool to be able to zoom in like this, though. I think that's way better than oh uh, yeah to show them, which is like Instagram, whatever. Like um, I always feel like whenever I I do oil commissions, and they want to see progress, and I take a picture and I send them like oh, it looks so much better in person. I'm you know, yeah. but they're like, oh sure it does. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm yeah. like. Oh, I'm like I'm telling you, it look it looks so awesome. But how many of those do you do a week? I mean, it seems like you're always doing a new one. Well, the, the for the commit like oil stuff, I don't. I wish I I don't. I haven't done any oil for a while just because I haven't had the time. And um, I have a an oil painting that I started a while ago that I want to finish. Um, hopefully, I'm hoping soon that I'll be able to do it. I I just been like catching up on. I have a few private commissions that I have to get done. And once I get those done, then I can start doing things that I want to do. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's cool that you're but, doing that. Yeah, I do them as much as I can. But um, do you have a few more paintings that you want yeah, to? Yeah, I could if you want, unless there's something I'll... else. Right. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay, cool. I have a. I guess I'll just share a couple more things. Let's see if I can do this right. Um, it's a little random, but um, not completely random. I guess I'll show you another recent one I did kind of like thinking about ideas like before I do the painting this one I sort of knew I wanted to do like this double sort of figure um so this is a mm. pretty big painting and it's the same person twice but I just wanted to kind of put them in a kind of interesting environment I guess um and I have this weird like black like doorway in the middle which I don't exactly know what that symbolizes, but it could be like just like uh, something vast and dark. <laughs> um, but I also just wanted to do like these kind of sculptural figures. So I was hmm. using, you know, these kind of thick marks of paint, like I usually like to do. And 
in these areas. It's so Somewhere. interesting how the those colors just you wouldn't expect those kind of color, you know, to, like working together that way. Right. But, but there's like this uh, almost like electricity or something like there's like a vibration. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I wanted it to be like. It's kind of like um, like the what makes it work is like if the colors are the same uh, lightness or darkness, like value, mm-hmm. they can work because they unify you know optically they come together where this is unified it's just that the colors are different inside it um and you probably know about that stuff like some people uh like i try to teach them that in my painting class like it's a way to add different colors without it becoming too busy Mm -hmm. Um, but this one i really like was kind of using a lot of textures um in there to kind of do that and i still i love how like the hair kind of connects into this shadow yeah. In a way, this shape is similar to this shape and this one. Um, and I just wanted to use this bright red, kind of like a vignette, like this weird red, and then it turns into blue surrounding it. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate I, it. I, there's a, there's so much, um, like, and it's, it's interesting. It's like, I think there's such a, a subtle a subtlety like with how you're, you're handling the color because you, you know, like, like, okay. If, if there's like a choir of people and every single person is singing a solo at the same time, yeah. right. It's just, it's like, it's just going to sound crazy. Yeah. But like, and I can, I can see how, you know, it'd be really easy by using so much color and different things to just for it to be chaotic, totally. but there, but there's still like this nice unity happening um, and like a flow with it. It's just, it's really cool. Yeah. That's important to me. Like I definitely am kind of on the verge of it being too much. I'm trying to like push it, but still it's that idea of like using really intense color, but having it still work together. Um, and I think um yeah, it's just it's something that you kind of experiment with and uh, you get better at it, you know, and like I definitely when I started painting had no clue how to do that. I did a lot of really bad looking paintings where I was using like every color you could imagine and it looked like LSD trip, like <laughs> fluorescent green around and next to some orange next to like it's like, you know, like <laughs> Not that I would know anything about that, but when, when people have those experiences, one of the things that happens is that (laughs) you see every little color comes out everywhere. There's no, there's no like harmony. It's just like, it's stupid, like green and purple and pink around everything. And Mm. um, that's not what you, you know, I didn't, I don't want that. I want it to be like a beautiful harmony or whatever. Um, So yeah, it's funny. I, and that, and again, I like, I love how you, it's, it's sort of like, like a, um, a little bit, I guess of a trademark in a way. I mean, I mean, I do it sometimes in a lot of art too, but I, I like noticing like that you're on your paintings, the parts that kind of fade into like how her, her top of her leg just kind of blends right into the background there. Yeah. yeah on that one. Yeah, yeah. I like doing that. That's yeah, really cool. Exactly. Yeah. Just like right here. Just, yeah, I love that. I love how the, there's like no beginning or end. It's just exactly. Yeah. Same thing here. It's fun to do that stuff. And it's a way to like make a figure painting a little more modern, maybe. Um, Cause I still, I mean, if you're trained, like a, like a classical art is a little bit like a, I don't want to say it's a cult. It's definitely like a religion where if you break the rules, it's easy to feel like, like you've left like the, it, it, like you're illegitimate or something if you're experimenting mm. um and i don't know what to think about that it's it's the same with like being a classical musician or something it's like i don't play classical music you know i mean i just play like blues rock or something you know and um but sometimes i think that rock music i don't really think it's really different i guess i um but um yeah i I definitely uh, like to try to experiment. I, I think there's something cool. Uh, 
about experimenting within a limitation. Like I still like the sculptural. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll always like that, you know, but um, all right. Yeah. It's interesting. I guess I'll go to another one. Um, Yeah. Like I like it to be realistic, but also have to like push what that might look like a little bit. Um, I have another one I did. Let's see. What should I go to now? Well, I did this weird skull drawing and it's actually like, it's actually like a baboon skull. And I like oh, interesting this, just cause it's different, but I did like three different views of the same weird skull. Um, and I kind of put these other lines around it just to kind of, I wanted to experiment and whatever. I don't know exactly what it means other than I'm interested in skulls. I like how they look. Yeah. It's really, it is a really weird looking skull. It oh, lo- almost looks like an alien or something. Yeah, It's one of the freakiest looking skulls I've ever seen. Like I have some <laughs> pictures I took of someone like holding it in front of their face and their hair is like this. And it, they're like, so scary. To, it's actually scary to look at. <laughs> like it'll give you, it's just one of those weird images that could give you nightmares. Um, but in this one, I just, I really wanted to go after the nuances of all the little like lines. Yeah. Um, but I did all this other stuff just to kind of play with it a little bit and be a little different. Oh yeah. Because it um, makes it interesting to look at. Yeah. It's more of a piece of artwork instead of just like, but I, I don't know. I, I, I like that kind of just really looking deep and in detail at, at a skull that I, or at a shape that I think is interesting. Um, so um that's this is a sort of a recent drawing um, yeah it's cool and I, was, I, I i like um also the things that you're doing with the values where you're you know like you're letting things get lost a little bit which is a, a yeah. really cool like i like you know a lot of people want to like define every little thing but it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of cool to just like no that's in the shadow so oh definitely um yeah but, i always do that yeah, I did like the uh, the one caricature cover that I did or thing I did last week where I had one day to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, even even with something like that, I get excited while I'm painting. Like the guy, that's the one side of his head is all in shadow, and and um, you, I could spend all this time the detailing the ear that's yeah. in the shadow, but I just did like this solid shade, and then I just did a cu- couple suggestions in there, and that's all it needed. I'm like, wow, it's right. done. And I finished it in like two minutes the the ear you know like yeah and it stuff like that like no one else really notices but i'm like i really like that part (laughs) that was that was fun yeah totally like (laughs) that happens to me too like i'm sure like this drawing was more something i just did for myself like a lot of people don't even notice it but i personally like it but it's more like just such a weird thing um so it's just like I just did it for me though. You know, I, it's like one of those, it's too obscure of a piece for like it to necessarily get noticed in the way that I, you know, I, I mean, I yeah. don't know. It's, just, it's a strange one, but no, that's cool though. Whatever. Yeah. I did it for me. So it All really right. does look like an alien. It's strange. I know. I know, man. It's a weird one. Um, what else do I have here? I have a recent, so here's a study I did. Um, this is supposed to be for a bigger painting, uh, but I didn't do it yet. But it's another oh, one where I'm. I'm that's kind cool. Of come, thanks. It's kind of, it's just a sketch, like super brushy, but I just had like a color idea um, that I kind of put together to just to make it an abstract painting as well. So it's really just all it is is marks. Like this is a small painting. It's probably like twelve by sixteen inches. So even how big you might be seeing it here is way. The actual painting is probably about literally about this size. Yeah. Uh, like the way it is on the screen if you're looking at this on the computer screen um yeah it's pretty awesome uh, thanks um but hopefully it'll be a bigger painting because i'd like to do a bigger version of it i don't know if i'm going to do it but um i wanted it's another one where i i wanted to use these really bright like pinks and make it part of the part of the painting um so you're kind of you know integrating these colors together yeah um, trying to find other colors that might go with them um and that's it you know not a lot of not it's not like a conceptual painting per se but but i'm certainly interested in and 
in how he looked and like just his, his kind of expression. Uh, yeah. The brushwork on this just as is, is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I really like the, the, yeah. I mean, it's cool. It, like he's wearing like a, is it like a kimono? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's cool because it's so abstract, but like all the information is there still, you know, yeah, it's totally abstract. Yeah. There's like, if you pretty much, you can blur it all together as long as you put like, a basic light area and a basic shadow area it'll make sense it'll you can kind of tell what it is yeah like, that's his hand even though it's like a huge smear yeah that's all you needed There's nothing there but you can tell it's a hand you know um, you know what, what, what i like about this too though is like what, what i like about what you what you're doing with your work is you can tell you're having fun you know and you're enjoying it because i think you know, it's, it's really interesting. Like I watch my toddlers, um, they love to paint. We have painting stuff everywhere. And my wife's also an artist. So we have a lot of paint stuff and they just, it's an, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, I'm not saying <laughs> your work is childish. That's not what I'm trying to say. No, that's okay. Um, what I was trying to say, yeah. What I was trying to say though, is that Thanks, man. like, I, th yeah, I, I look at what they do yeah. and they're just so happy and having so much fun. Oh yeah. And, and, and watching what they do, like there's a couple of their paintings that they've done. And I'm like, I'm telling you, if that painting was 12 feet wide, yeah, yeah. that would be in a museum. Like the way oh, that, yeah, that they, the colors that they are choosing and what they're doing and the, the, the freedom of the brushwork that a two-year-old has. I know. And like, if you, but if you could blow that up to a huge thing, like, fuck you, Jackson Pollock. I mean, this I, is I know, way I more. Know. And and so like something like this, I'm looking at him like I can tell it. he's having he, he like he's having fun. He doesn't he's not caring. He's just like, I'm having no fun. Else. Yeah, man. And yeah. and like if for example, like if this painting was exactly like how it is right now, blown up huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would be it. But it, the thing is, is I think um it's way harder to paint like this for me anyways. Like it's hard to like big, big size big size but also just like sometimes to be able to let go and oh yeah you know, like just have fun yeah <laughs> you no, know i like... agree i get it i mean i definitely this painting i when i do like a study like this i definitely feel like freer with the paint and when you do it like a smaller painting i i do want it to look like it was fun to paint yeah even if it wasn't um yeah. i usually I, do have, I mean I usually do have fun painting, but there's always, there's also like a stressful moment. Mm. Um, like I recently was like, I've been working on a painting here that's in the other room and I'm, I don't even know if I'll finish it, but like, it's been like really difficult to paint. Um, but um, for a number of other reasons, but like um, basically it's not always fun, but like, like this one was fun to do. I, cause I didn't really care about getting too precise with it. I kind of was like, okay, that's where the head's going to be. It's not going to be, you know, and I just, for whatever reason, I felt comfortable with leaving it that way. Um, and I also probably because I thought I would do another bigger version that was kind of more dialed in, which I just, I haven't done. I don't know if I'll do it, but um, hmm. that's what this one was. And a small painting, you can kind of really get into the mark making like this it's a little easier to, to get these kind of cool effects where on, if it was a 50 or 60 inch painting, I'd have to use a brush. That's like this big to get that same look. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, that's the thing that's tricky with that stuff, man. Yeah. Let oh man. See. Let me see if I have any other ones I could show you. I mean, I, I have lots, but. Uh, like I, I love uh, Jenny Seville. Her, oh yeah. Um, love her paintings. And like I saw, I think I have like a book of hers and I, I think it might be in the book, but like she would use like, um, like she's painting a house. Like she'd have like a, like, you know, you know, oh, yeah. the big things that you pour the paint in. And then she was using like these massive brushes and, and yeah. it's just, it's just crazy. See, like seeing that kind of a, an approach. Cause I've never worked that big. Yeah, or, like and she, she's like on scaffolding on yeah. some of the things <laughs> like, yeah yeah so I, if you have the right studio it's awesome i don't because my studio is basically my living room I mean, yeah i would love to be able to get crazier but uh this is another newish one 
Oh, that's yeah. nice. Crazy colors. And I'm kind of yeah. using those reds again. Um, and trying to push this like red and blue thing. Um, yeah. And, um, anyway, like just totally pure blue right out of the tube, pure red. Um, cause I was like, the reason I did these, I, I just kind of was, I mean, I wanted to do some brighter color paintings, but I also just was like, why do I buy these reds and then always like dull them down? Like, mm. make yeah. out of them. I just want to just put fucking pure paint right on the painting. And something about that was fun. So like, this is just like pure red and orange. Um, this is not the best photo of this painting. I haven't taken like a high res picture of it yet, but, um, and I'm kind of doing this. I like to do these outliney things. Um, that is pretty thing, awesome though. Like the, thanks. like just the pure color, just like, bam. And like, I mean, I, I really want to get big shapes of color. Like one thing I see that is there's this thing in, in painting right now that's popular of these kind of fragmented paintings. Um, I don't know if you've noticed any of it. And the, the, the kind of people that I'm hanging around with, it's kind of popular right now. There's just this sort of like, almost like double images. Mm. Uh, it's kind Oh, of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to like talk about specific artists, but people will know who I'm talking about. I have a friend of mine that's, do, that's doing a lot of stuff like that. Where like, there'll be like yeah. several different arms or something. Or, yes. Yeah, I haven't I've never, seen that. I've yeah. personally never liked it, but like, I know that it's popular and I, I totally get why. But there's something for me that I like about, like it's exciting looking and you can almost like see the painting being formed. It's almost like, it reminds me of like, mm. it's like, uh, it's kind of like, it's like the universe, like forming a constellation, forming a galaxy, forming, it's like these things form out of nothing. Um, you, can, you can see that process. And I think that's exciting for a lot of viewers. Um, for the, the same reason why you might like the sketchier paintings more than the more like rendered ones. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but I just, I like to kind of decide on a shape and really like go for it, um, and make that choice, um, and have the purity of like this color. Um, I just find that looks better when I put the painting on a wall to have that big, actually this painting is behind me over here. You can oh yeah see, you can see how big it is anyway i mean this is like actually i don't know i'm probably a tiny mini version but you can see this painting is like pretty big painting yeah probably no, probably no one can see that sorry but <laughs> <laughs> like well i mean i just see like the small little screen right now so yeah i know i see that uh, anyway um anyway i like to do those kind of things yeah no, that's all that's cool man thanks it's awesome. Thanks for even. And it's interesting too. I like, I like like the, the, the large shape of like the reds and oranges. And then that, that small little, like kind of teal green in the background, just that small little bit there. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah it's, it's cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I kind of like put these weird shapes in here, almost like it looks like she's on fire. Um, and I don't really know exactly what that is, but I just thought it looked like that and it looked cool. So I kind of, <laughs> um, that's funny. She's, yeah, so something. Um, what else do I have? Let's see. I have a lot. It's funny. It's like, it's hard to like just decide which ones. I, I guess I could show another style of painting that I like to do. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Like interior sort of paintings. Um, let me see. Here's one um, that I like. This one's of my favorite possession, which is my rocking chair. Mm. Uh, just like an empty chair simple painting but it's kind of like the morning early morning sunlight's coming through yeah um that's and awesome I, just, I like simple things like this and something about the emptiness of it um you know it could have a lot of different meanings or whatever but i just i like this chair you know and i like that color of it um but i like doing these sort of abstract paintings where there are these big shapes and uh, yeah, and I and again, like similar to the very first painting that we looked at, I like the marks where you're seeing like like the paint. There's certain areas where it's like thin, and you can see the bot the background popping through. Where like I think a lot of you know a lot of people would be tempted to just paint that all solid and fill it in, 
but there's there's something i think valuable about leaving it that way yeah yeah this one is definitely it's not the best photo of it this is an older painting um but yeah like it's definitely thinner paint here thick paint here i I like the kind of abstraction of doing those things yeah Uh, so i mean that's something and and this painting really it was just a it's a simple painting um but it's like i like those simple things like just something you might see um out of the you know just the sitting in the corner of your room yeah very simple thing and i I like doing these like i have another one I i don't know let me see if i can find it um it's an interior. I'm gonna go through my stuff for a second here. Uh, I know where it is. Somewhere. <laughs> it's in my paintings folder, which is 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 here. A little bit here somewhere. Right. Um, like this one is. Oops. Sorry. Bear with me for a second. Um, this is like a similar, similar. Uh, similar idea. Uh, is this working now? Where's that go? Hang on. Sorry, I'm still figuring out how to use. Why can't I shoot? Where'd my window go? Oh, here we are. Okay, got it. Sorry about that. So right. this is my hmm. my apartment. It's just another basic, like a simple painting of a simple scene of like the stuff coming in and the light just hitting things, which I like. Yeah. Um, but it's abstract. It's just pieces of paint. Like this is a rectangle that becomes yeah. the stovetop. You know, a rectangle becomes the window. Um, a piece of like orange becomes like a, you know, whatever this thing is, strainer. You know, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, that's but that's that's what I'm saying. Like about that one piece that with I think it was again it was the first painting, where there's like you could see, you know, th- this is the kind of stuff I like about paintings like this, where it's like, you know, because I I spend a lot of time on for like in for it depends on illustration is a little bit different um i'm getting a lot looser um the more i paint but like Mm. i remember like you know early on i would detail everything would be so detailed yeah yeah, and and then i i just the more i've painted i realized it doesn't need to you know no you know like and it's just funny too because in illustration you know that this is going to be printed at a certain size no one's going to see this the, right. the way like why am i zoomed in so much and why am i you I know think like yeah i mean i know i mean i first of all you also may you may be a much more patient person than me for doing detailed work like i'm i can do detailed work but i'm not super patient with it um i can do it but what i try to kind of do is it's also about the accuracy it's about not just like you know, the accuracy of the detail, but also the accuracy of like how the colors relate and the values relate to. And I mean, exactly. You know that. A lot of people yeah. don't really see that stuff. Like most people see the, see detail first, but one of the reasons why, you know, it looks real is because of like getting this shape, just the right color and the right darkness, um, yeah. you know, stuff like that, which takes a lot of concentration that, I've seen a lot of much more detailed interior scenes, for example, that might not look as real. Um, but, you know, not that that's not to say that I wouldn't mind, you know, I could certainly keep working on this painting. Well, I think, I think that's, you know, if, if, if there is a, a, a magic in painting, I think that the magic is values because yeah, like, There's that's, a the, that's the thing that, you know, like if, <laughs> I always tell students that like, I mean, that's mostly the issue that I see over and over and over again is, you know, if there's a flatness, you know, there's a flatness um, right. or a, you know, there's, if there's something that's not quite feeling right, it's almost always the values. And like, you know, it's, it's just kind of an interesting thing because 
you know, a lot of times my students will hand in something and they, they have all these questions. Like, I don't understand why uh, it just doesn't, it's not feeling right or whatever. And it's usually always the values. But then the funny thing is, is they will have, they've spent so much time trying to do details. Yeah. And it's totally. like, the totally. details do not matter. Like until you have the values, right. Oh, I know. I know. Um, and they want to jump into color right away. And it's like, wait, 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 whoa. I know that's super <laughs> common. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. It's almost like using a different part of your brain. It's not like we're teaching that way at Lime Academy right now, where we're starting super simple in the beginning with only line drawing and then going to, to um, slowly bringing in the values but one of the things I'm doing with, with the students there is like only drawing with line and getting as much information as you can. So, and then we'll go into the values and kind of isolate each technique. So you focus on it. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times it's like, don't even, I tell them if we start doing a value, I just say, if it's a shadow, don't show anything inside it, you know, just take out everything and just focus on getting the shape of it right but don't show me every little thing because yeah, if you're doing it by hand, every detail you're making is a little bit off. So you want to minimize your, I mean, I told them it's like juggling. It's like no one, when they're, when you're juggling, well, actually some people do this. It's like, do you really want to add more things to it? It's hard enough to do anyway. Yeah. And like, so how much do you want to do? It's almost like, oh, it's like texting and driving. You know, it's not good. You know, yeah. it's like, don't do that. Like, focus on the driving part. Don't yeah. try to do another thing. You know, and I don't know. I mean, it's just like, I don't know. And the, the better you get, though, the more the more confident you get. Um, with yeah. That. Well, I mean, it's funny because like I, most people that I know, like that there have been students they like and even just like fans like that will leave comments or whatever the the thing that really gets them going is the details like oh my gosh you, it's the details are amazing one uh, of the things that i love about like what i've been doing for the last couple of years like for example like like the the putin that i just did um it is really painterly it's really like um when you zoom in on it it's like there's a lot of suggestions like it's yeah. and and then the, and i even the characters in the background i they're very cartoony like yeah. I, I i kept it very simple because cool. you don't you're only going to see it like they're going to be that little like in the so it doesn't matter yeah um but like years ago i would have like done like the pores in the skin i mean i i used to go like you know i had someone tell me once like recently that you know I, I was a big fan of your stuff earlier you were like way more realistic yeah you're, and stuff. you were better then <laughs> and it's and it's like way more realistic yeah and it's like that's okay. funny yeah. the, the funny thing is what i realize is um i've gotten that too by the way yeah and, and it's like but it's like i i am you know <laughs> okay it goes back to like even like when i was um when i was doing um when i was first starting off my work was I would use I would basically render with color pencils and I would do these super tight trying to get as realistic as I could with color pencils and it took forever to like do something then when I started painting I'm like holy crap I can just do almost the same thing with a few brush strokes mm -hmm. and it's like the same thing it's like yeah I'm, uh, years ago maybe I would get so photorealistic it was ridiculous but now I realize I can almost paint the same thing in in a couple hours uh right. with with larger brush strokes and you're going to see it at a distance anyways no one is going to see it this zoomed in the way yeah. that you're you're so impressed by it but like yeah. there's a few examples like i remember i did like a trump cover years ago where i had him uh we go full circle here trump yeah man, um, I know. <laughs> but i, I had but i had this cover where he's um he's tied at, at the stake burning at the stake but it's uh, like he's tied to his own building and it the right. cover it was for utney reader and it said fire the rich or something and he's just like <laughs> uh, it's got this uh, the expression but like the, but with the, like that cover it it was important on that cover for me to be detailed because the his face fills up like a lot of the cover 
because it was a it was a forced perspective looking down sure so yeah people are some people are like i don't see you doing detail like that anymore like well if i ever have a another image where the face is going to be that close up I, i will be that detailed yes it has a purpose like if you look at his feet they're like suggest they're like a few brush strokes down there basically yeah. his feet are but no one talks about that <laughs> it's like he's a good, he's a good subject though because everybody oh yeah look at his face yeah I mean, and people are drawn to faces oh yeah i mean you can render the face and then you can kind of get away with a little bit of i i mean i for me it's like um like that one the one piece i did last week where i had one day to do it mm-hmm. um I was, and it, I think his name is Doctor Oz. This is the guy I painted. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah, and but you know He's what? A Republican guy, right? I don't know much. About I don't him. know anything about him either. I just painted it like, yeah. but like the that painting is so loose. Yeah. But I love that more for than you. It is for me. It's not, but for you. Well, if you look at the, if you look at his, if I, I think I shared like a zoom in on my Instagram. I think or a close up, but you can see the the brush strokes pretty much and to me that's like way way more exciting because when it when you see it smaller it all pulls together and it looks cool but like you don't need all of that you know it's just it's just for it's just funny because i i just feel like i think the more you paint like i remember even my dad he was a wildlife artist and like in his earlier years he everything was you know super tight like every feather and everything like um and then he started doing plein air painting he started getting outside and painting from life and all this stuff and i noticed that the change in his work is is now like the bird will just be like a suggestion here like it'll be like this mark and and it looks more realistic than than that those years where he was just slaving over like the details just like just painting every little thing. And um, I think it's just a progression as painters. I, I mean, I mean, I noticed that with a lot of painters, they start to get looser. And um, I'm also a little older and I'm a little, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm still physically, I can do it, but I'm a little shakier than I was like 20 years ago, mm. as far as like my ability. I, I mean, I can still do it, but I know that it is pretty common. People tend to get sketchier as they get older well, like, remember, like Monet, remember, like towards the end, he was going blind. Right. And he was well, doing these yeah, right. like loot, like, but his paintings were like, got, got even, you know, more expressive and more loose. And yeah. Uh, and yeah. you're like, gosh, the guy's like losing his sight, but he's still doing these incredible, like, you know, like I, I'm thinking of one in particular of like some, I think it was like a chapel or something. He did a lot of the same so, cathedral. Yeah. And it was just kind of cool seeing like how loose and brushy it started to get, but yeah yeah a Um, lot of painters will like caravaggio got looser too but he got looser because physically he was all fucked up because he got beat up a few times and mm. his face was cut up oh my gosh so he they think that he he um may have been partially blinded in like a fight this guy stabbed him basically as a revenge for for some shit that he did earlier in his life. So yeah, if anybody, if you want to read about the craziest artist ever, read about Caravaggio. It's like yeah. absolutely insane. But like a lot of artists do get sketchier, even Renaissance artists. Um, some don't, but a lot of them do. Um, I don't know if I'll, I want to be like that. I, I, I actually really admire precise painting. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's something I want to do more of, like actually like less brush strokes. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to do some super smooth kind of things. So. Yeah, it's it's. I think like my style is kind of like a mix because I, um, like if I have more like for example the cover I'm doing for Mad right now, um, it it's a it's a mix of there's things come there's things up close and there's things back. Yeah. Um, and their their character Alfred e. Newman is always like the main subject, so oh, yeah. he he's like pretty detailed um and uh you know he's so he's 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 pretty real looking and detailed but then there's like fish and different things that are in the background that are just like marks they're gonna be you know but then there's then there'll be like um like a shoe is up close and it's gonna be way more detailed you know so i i like try to i like to play with um like the distance between things if there's a bunch of objects that to me that's fun like 
Like I'm going to, it's going to have really tight rendering and very suggestive rendering at the same time, the same piece. But for me, that's cool because it's, it's showing depth and everything else. Um, and then yeah. they always want, they have, they have all these like elements that they want me to add. And I'm like, it seems overwhelming, but then you're like, well, that stuff's mostly in the background. So like, I don't have to like go crazy. Um, right. so that, that's, it's kind of fun to play with that, I think. Um, but you know, and, and again, for something like that, you, I have to plan out like, okay, like my, my main character is Alfred E. Newman. It's almost finished. And like, once that's done, I can like kind of relax a little bit more with the rest of the piece. Yeah. But, um, but I, yeah. um, I'm not sure if that's how you work on things, but like, I tend to like time out, like, yeah. okay, I need this much time to paint him. Um, I have how many days left to get the painting done? Okay. Well, I'll spend this day doing this stuff and then I have to like break it apart. Yeah. Um, no, you're, it's definitely, you have a real, you have a stricter schedule, but I do, I try to paint the whole thing, but I'm always fixating on people's heads because I like painting them. Yeah. Like, so usually like, I do like to kind of put some detail in one spot and then I feel like good. I start to feel good about the painting then. I'm like, yeah. This is starting to look awesome now. <laughs> move somewhere else like i don't do well if i have to build up the whole thing at once because i i like to get into the rendering a little and i, I just love when it starts to like look 3d mm -hmm. you know that that always feels exciting to me like once that start because there's always a, a point i think in every painting where you're just like oh oh yeah it's like <laughs> it's not, all the time. not working oh, right man. The one I was working on the last few days was like that. And like, it's still weird looking, but that happens. And I did a, I did some other ones that I liked so that I felt a little better. Um, but I, I was just kind of in a rut a little bit. Cause I got back from all this traveling and working. And then I was like, all right, I got to start some new work now, you know, and just figure out some new ideas. And I'm, I'm yeah. kind of at that point where I really feel like I've got to do something new and a little more interesting. Um, like, I don't want to just do a figure painting for a figure painting's sake or something. I just, I want to do something a little more out there. Um, so I don't know what that's going to be, but. Hmm. Just, more baboons, maybe. Some, <laughs> yeah, more baboons. Yeah, yeah. more baboons and, and psychedelic mushrooms or something. Um, we'll see. I have this watercolor that I got to finish. Um, let's see if you can see this, but I have fun doing stuff like this. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. It's like yeah, Brian. Look at that guy. Yeah. Nice. I love it. That's great. Oops. It reminds me of like it remind, it, it, that's that's really I, great. I I love I love fish though. I love piranha I, on a unicycle or something. Yeah. I just love, you know, there's so much fun to draw and paint because for me, anyways, I love um when you look at a, a real like, when you look at a fish, the the layers of gills. There's like yeah. this weird depth of gills where they just live. Like, oh, I know. you know, I see people paint fish sometimes and just kind of suggest a few things, but like you really look, there's just like, like a depth of like texture and gills that just lay on top of each other. And I don't know, I get so excited. <laughs> like this yeah, is so man. much, especially like I love painting with guac. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me for my uh, talk with uh, Hollis Dunlop. So sorry about the abrupt ending there. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, my Zoom changed, uh, settings are changed. And so it only lets me do 40 minutes. I used to be able to do it like as long as I wanted. But anyways, um, I apologize for that. Um, it was really great talking with him. And I, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing his work and maybe uh, you learned something about his process or whatever. But it was really cool, I think, um, to be able to see uh, his pieces up front and just I love um, how he uh, creates like an energy. There's like a vibration between the colors that he's choosing and and also just like the looseness and the, the sort of impression like painting that he's doing with very realistic, uh, you know, anatomy, lighting and that sort of a thing values, but very abstract with, with the paint. So anyways, I hope that you really enjoyed that. He's an awesome guy, an amazing artist. Um, please check him out. Um, on Instagram uh, it's just Hollis Dunlap on Instagram he posts a lot of really cool um, paintings and progress shots live uh, pieces he's working on and, and so on so check that out so um, thank you so much for the support 
and uh, we'll catch you next time.